So welcome to lab number six on heat transfer simulation. Uh, while we are doing this exercise, uh, please look at the instructions. Um, although I have to note that this time the preparation of the base file will only be in the video. So instructions are only for the exercises that you need to do in addition. And uh, we are going to start by creating the base model, but before that I will show you how to connect remotely to the computer in, in the computer labs. If you do not have a UNI ID yet, then you need to get one. You will need that to register VPN access and uh, to, to connect remotely. And so the, the first thing that I'm going to show is exactly how you can do that. You need 40 client VPN. Um, you can download it for free and then you need to enter the connection details which you can see here, that's the remote gateway. If you need help, you can contact Frederick Rong. Um, I will have these details also uh, in an instructions file in Moodle, so you can check it from there. And you need to type in your username, which is your uni ID without the at ttu.ee and your password, which you provided then you need to connect VPN and then you can just use uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop. So that's uh, okay, now it's connected. And computer name, you need to choose one that's available in the lab. We will uh, give you some examples that you can choose from. Now I'm going with this one and you need to add .intra.ttu.e uh, to the end. And uh, I have already provided my uh, account details for the UniID account that I use. So I only need to type in my password and then it works. Now launch console and start building. So we start building by clicking on the model wizard and this time we're going to do a three-dimensional simulation so just click that heat transfer in solids is the model that we are going to use and you need to add it then go to study select stationary because we're going to do a stationary simulation and then click done for our geometry we will use millimeters so here we are and uh, we must import an already completed geometry that i have prepared for you click on geometry click import then browse And then import. So you, you can check in the instructions what this model is and uh, and also the publication that corresponds to it so you can see what's what. It's um, as stated in the instructions it's uh, heavily defeatured to make it easier and faster to simulate so I removed all of the unnecessary uh, parts while preserving the thermal mass. Removed all the filleting, removed the bolts and screws and such, which uh, would increase simulation time unnecessarily. And comparatively, the thermal mass of these features is uh, much smaller than the whole model. We have imported the geometry, and now we create uh, domain selections and boundary selections to make working with the model easier. You can do that by going under definitions, selections, and we will use explicit first and name our various uh, domains. First, the enclosure, which in this model is 
number one. Then you can just duplicate as uh, many times as you want and then rename. Next thing is heater, but that will be number eight. Next thing is water in the reaction chamber of the uh, chip, which is number 10. And I will make the model transparent so you can see what's selected. So this one is the microfluidic chip. Next thing is the circuit board for the heater, which is seven in this case. And we need to add the air domain, which is two to four. And in the meantime, you can see how you can easily um, select boundaries if you know, or boundaries, sorry, domains, if you know what number they have. And uh, this also means that you can copy the same way from other selections in your model. Copper fill will be number 11 to 36. Next is the positive contact, and this one's a boundary. So, 1,000, yeah. 82, 92, these are the boundaries that we need. Now the ground. And for the heat losses, we need to define the walls which surround the device. So first the uh, vertical walls. And you see that we have selected the vertical walls of the enclosure, but there's more. Now it's complete. And bottom and top. So that's that. Ether surface. And now we're going to do something that you have not done before, in my opinion, which is uh, connecting the different selections. And the interesting thing about this, what I'm doing right now, is you can create a union 
of uh, different features and they will update according to uh, what these selections are. So if you change the selections, then the union will also be updated, which makes it really easy to handle geometry changes in your model. Now, copper. And I make all kinds of selections, some of them for materials, some of them for heat transfer. And um, we're going to add parameters, which you have already used before as a function. So nothing interesting happening here. You can just import the parameters that I provided. Uh, these are for dynamically changing initial values and such. And um, at the moment, it is what it is. You might need to change some of them according to the exercise. I will add a domain probe to measure the temperature of the reaction liquid. I will also name it as such. And it should be in Celsius degrees. So this one is the selection for the micro reactor for roughly 50 uh, microliters. And inside this is our reaction liquid of which we can get now an average temperature. In reality, your sensor is somewhere here in the middle and uh, therefore you cannot directly measure the average temperature. You cannot measure anywhere else, in fact, than just uh, where your probe is. So the interesting thing about simulation, and that's the, the true power of it, is that here you can do this. Furthermore, I can add a domain point probe, which will act as the temperature sensor exactly where the sensor is in real life. And you see now it's close to the middle of that reactor cavity. And I'm, I'm sorry about the looks of this uh, model because of remote desktop. I had to use software rendering. So that's why it uh, looks as ugly as it does. Probably you will have to also set up your console if it hasn't been set up already to use software rendering because Direct3D or OpenGL might not work. Might not even start, in fact. And once this is defined, so now I have defined the position. Actually, let's do it the same way as in the publication. I'm going to also have to name this probe. So what I'm doing with the descriptions will be for the plots. So now it's time to start adding the materials. And we're going to use mostly built-in materials from the material library. You should use the same to get the same values. So under selection, you select previously defined copper. Now, um, FR4 
for the PCB. And okay, it has everything predefined, which is good. For air, we need to select the air union, then add material for water. And the plastic is ABS, which is not predefined, so we need to create a blank material for ABS and select the plastic domains and then just provide the values ourselves. There's some console weirdness going on here. Ah, uh, yeah, forgot uh, multiplication. So this is how you define custom materials that are not part of console. We are still using uh, library values that you can quite easily find on the internet by searching. And now let's move on to, wait a second, domain needing material 9. Something is missing still. Let's see what domain 9 is. There doesn't seem to be a domain nine. Okay. Something got left out from the copper selection. So we go back here and add number nine. Now it should be okay. Still shows an error, but there is no error anymore. It's just not, it hasn't updated yet. Okay. When you run, it should update. So, going to the domains. By default, you have these three. So, heat transfer in solids. That's just uh, the heat transfer equation. At the moment, it is not time dependent because that's what we selected. Initial values is where uh, you can provide an ambient temperature if you would like. And we want to do that. So let's just replace this with ambient temperature. So the model will start preconditioned to the ambient temperature that you have in your room. And thermal insulation at the moment is all of the external boundaries. And now we start adding the different heat losses. So first uh, radiation or radiative heat loss. 
and again outside is ambient temperature now we manually type the emissivity for plastic next thing is uh, convective heat fluxes and you select external natural first uh, let's do the horizontal ones and this is why we have the parameters defined so this is the plate diameter value again ambient temperature outside pressure is just atmospheric pressure so nothing special we select the top then make another for the bottom uh, wait so this one was for the top and we made another for the bottom just like that and here also have to select downside so upside top downside bottom and finally the vertical walls the value being this one for the height and in this model the heater is defined for the sake of simplicity and for a, a, a rapid solution time as a boundary condition. So you have on the heater surface a stable temperature, which is the set point that uh, we define in the parameters. Now we need to generate the mesh. We will use a finer mesh and if you recall from the lecture having a higher mesh resolution will increase the the memory requirement of uh, solving the model but it will also increase the precision of your solution so we work with a final uh, finer mesh because there are um, parts in our model which uh, have smaller dimensions and for it to be meshed properly we need to select a higher mesh resolution now since we have large domains and uh, very small size domains you can make um, a custom mesh but we don't have to do that it works just as well with the built-in mesh generation but if you really want to make it nice and improve the quality you see we still have edges that are uh, shorter than the specified minimum element size um, you can go to statistics and take a look and the average uh, element quality is uh, 0 0.68 so this one calculated with the radius ratio method um, it's not bad could be better and how you can make it better is um, by selecting uh, the larger domains and uh, and meshing it with a coarser mesh and selecting the finer domains or the smaller domains and, uh, and and meshing them with a finer even finer mesh that's how you can uh, improve your results but for this model what we have here will be quite enough and if we did everything right then we can run the model now it will run with the default values the ones that uh, were provided in the uh, parameters the model has finished running now we can look at the results and recall that at the moment we ran it at a single set of parameters so i scaled uh, to celsius degrees and uh, unfortunately the renderer does not really work um, at the moment the reaction temperature is uh, 59 point 
775 when the heater is set to 60 so that's uh, quite quite good there's not much of an error and we can get additional information by going for a volume plot but this one must be disabled first the only problem is again the renderer is in the way so let's see you can hide geometry objects to make it possible to look at what's inside This is a very nice trick and that you should remember for your own work. Now this is the distribution on the chip and you can select various uh, color representations we'll just stick with the thermal so here's our chip underneath the heater and we can even look inside at the reaction chamber So this one is the temperature distribution in the reaction chamber and if you click at various parts but first you need to check that it's in Celsius degrees to make it easier to interpret you can click at various spots to see what the temperature is it's even possible to make cuts So this one is the temperature distribution along the, the line that I have just dragged. And uh, yeah, again, the, the renderer is, is not the best. I have changed the renderer now. It's uh, far better visible. And so let's go back to the surface first. So this one is the temperature distribution on the surface. And after what I showed previously, hiding the other details in the model now, this is the reaction chamber with the heater directly underneath and uh, the temperature distribution in there. And this plot is going to be that cut line, uh, which is still looking quite weird. In any case, if this is what happens on your side, you can always just export the plot and then look at it more close up. Now, um, for the next steps, this is where the, the hint part of the video comes. What you will need to add is defined also uh, in the instructions. Uh, it, it's hidden, but, uh, but you can see what you need to enter if you if you need some help so these are the variables that you need to add you also need to add uh, a parametric sweep and um, these are the temperatures that you need to test with 
it's provided in the uh, Excel uh, table that uh, comes along with the instructions file. This is what you will need to work with and where the final results will need to go. And um, you need to also connect the volume in range to your uh, domain probe under um, this reaction liquid. And then you can run the model and you will receive um, a nice distribution of um, reaction temperatures, volumes in range as a function of uh, heat or temperature.